So everybody, so I, I will talk about the the pyramid optical gain. It, it, it looks like to be a hot topic uh, in the last years, and how we manage it uh, on at the large binocular telescope. So yeah. okay, uh, first slide is a bit uh, to give a, an historical context to the younger. Uh, of this meeting. So we are talking about the, the SCAO, the single conjugate adaptive optics at BT, that the first system were um, called FLAO systems. Now they have been upgraded into SO systems. But anyhow, we, we are talking about uh, adaptive secondary uh, mirror as corrector with the 672 actuators and uh, pyramid wave sensors that uh, in FLAO case were 30 by 30 sub aperture. Now we have uh, equipped with Occam to camera and with SOS and, and, and they have now 40 by 40 sub apertures. So uh, we had the first light uh, with FLAO and uh, the infrared test camera in 2010. And this is an example of the PSF. Uh, and why, when Norbert asked, uh, how do you deal with the NCPA? Someone was just saying, no, no, we don't have NCPA. So the camera was just uh, simple and nice and uh, no need of any NCPA correction. And then the, the 2011 arrives at the, a temporary camera because our official instrument was a bit late. So we had the Pisces and uh, again, the camera was uh, so nice uh, that uh, and, and simple because it was a simple camera and a simple imager and uh, and uh, we had no need for NCPA. But the story changed a little bit when in 2015 we had the, finally uh, our N30 camera in Lucy. Uh, that Lucy is a very it's quite complex instrument. Uh, is a multi-object spectrography imager, uh, different scalings, uh, and so a uh, big instrument, big NCPA. And uh, so we had to start to deal with uh, this kind of stuff. And, um, and so the, the, new, the new point was to deal with NCPA with the pyramid wave sensor. So now in the next uh, um, two, three slides, I will talk about uh, uh, what uh, was proposed and implemented in 2015, maybe by Simone and, and others. And uh, that he proposed in the AO4 ELT um, uh, conference and uh, recently we, we just went back to the results we had uh, on 2015 and we decided finally to put them in a bit more detailed paper that you can find uh, uh, in uh, INDA. So, and I'm summarizing these results in the next uh, two three slides and then I will show you the latest results on Sky uh, in the rest of the presentation. So um, here you see a schematic of the of the scow loop, so probably you are familiar or familiar with these kind of things. The, point, the critical point is how to uh, represent the pyramid wave sensor. And we decided to represent it uh, like uh, two component uh, that uh, one is the WDL is a matrix that represents the sensitivity, the modal sensitivity of the pyramid while it's working in the fraction limited regime. While uh, the other box, the gamma opt is uh, uh, another matrix that represent what is the optical gain uh, of the pyramid uh, while working in partial correction uh, regime because you know when uh, the correction gets uh, get lower so you are not the PSF is wider and the pyramid loses sensitivity. This sensitivity loss is uh, uh, modal because the change mode by mode depending uh, on the radial order maybe and uh, and so is is again a, a matrix. So what happens when you want to offset your, your wavefront. So at LBT, what we do is that we went put, when we put an offset, uh, is not uh, uh, the traditional slope offset, okay? But we thought that it was much more convenient to go for a uh, wavefront uh, offset uh, in, on, on, in the mirror space. So in the, in the wavefront space directly, not in the slope space, because uh, these uh, you can calibrate in nanometers and, uh, and uh, on top of this, uh, particularly working with the pyramid wave sensor, this is convenient because pyramid can change configuration. So you know that when you change modulation or you change binning of the wave sensor, then uh, you have a, a different uh, reconstructor, okay? Change the sensitivity, change the sub aperture. So you don't want to have, a, 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 instead of having a, a full matrix of different uh, slope offset, you just have one 
vector of of uh, of uh, uh, NCPA compensator in the, in the wavefront uh, space. But if you don't take into account, uh, uh, if you don't do nothing, when if you calibrate your uh, NCPA in daytime, let's say in diffraction limited condition, and you go on sky in partial correction, what happens is that you usually overcorrect your uh, NCPA because your pyramid is uh, losing uh, sensitivity, and uh, uh, and then your loop uh, is applying uh, higher higher uh, compensation. So. And you see in simulation, these two images you see on the, on the, on the left, you see, uh, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but here you can see the uh, NCPA we introduced in simulation. This is the overcorrection in presence of turbulence. So uh, the trick then is to put the, uh, uh, in the loop an optical compensator, an optical gain compensator, okay? That we, K, we call here K, so that uh, is compensating the, the, the uh, gamma opt uh, effect, uh, and we can recover the nominal, um, the nominal uh, uh, correction that we were looking for, even in partial correction. So um, the the problem are not uh, over because uh, our uh, gamma opt uh, is varying in uh, depending on the brightness uh, and uh, uh, of course on the seeing and seeing it varies in time. And so we have to, we need something that is uh, um, tracking uh, the, in time, uh, measuring and tracking the, the gamma opt value. So what uh, the, the approach we, 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 we found uh, and we tested in 2015 was to inject a probe signal in the, in the absolute command of, of the loop here so we, it could be uh, one mode of, of, of several modes um, uh, modulated in, in amplitude, okay? And then uh, what you do, uh, you, you demodulate uh, these, uh, the absolute commands to be sure that what is uh, currently applied uh, in the, um, was it actually applied on the mirror because you are in closed loop. So what you put uh, in the, as a nominal commands it will be, partially corrected by the EO loop. And then you measure into the modulation. So you demodulate the, what are the differential commands. So the commands the, uh, computed by from the slopes and records from the pyramid wavefront sensor. Okay. So uh, what is seen by the uh, wavefront sensor divided by what is the uh, probe that you are injecting. And then uh, you, you do a, a little close loop uh, because you want this ratio to be one. And so uh, you do uh, an integrate, we do just an integrated loop to actualize the K value, that is the, our uh, optical gain compensator. Uh, well, so um, then this is a theory. So everything is because of the modal nature of the pyramid, everything is matrix and vector and so on. But we decided to start uh, uh, in, the, in the most simple uh, approach. So, so I, I, um, to uh, neglect uh, the modal uh, nature of the optical gain and start uh, and see what we get to just start just modulating um, one mode, measuring one optical gain. And so uh, all our metrics be, uh, here become, uh, in fact, a, a scalar, okay, geopt, and uh, uh, just normalizing the, the slopes that comes out from the wavefront sensor for the value of the optical gain that we uh, measured with the, with this demodulation approach. So, um, in doing that, uh, of course, we have to. So, in practice, we have to set up uh, uh, the uh, the things, and we have a, a, a set of parameter that we can control. So, these are the number of frames. Here, I listed what are the um, typical uh, order of, of value that we we'll use uh, uh, on for this uh, for this implementation, and we have a. Uh, uh, of course, the number of frames that uh, of slopes that we want to collect uh, and uh, and, uh, and the commas to collect to um, for the demodulation, okay, for to to uh, to acquire one demodulation value, then uh, the amplitude of the probe signal, the the mode that we want to modulate, and here we, for example, we choose a mode thirty because uh, uh, higher is the mode uh, and much out of the atmosphere disturbance you are, but, uh, but we don't want to be 
uh, having just one uh, mode to to modulate, we don't want to be too far from uh, the spatial order in which we applied the non common path aberration in order to be sure that we are calibrated on the non common path aberration uh, modes. And uh, then uh, we have uh, the frequency of the modulation. You use uh, now 80 Hertz, uh, and then into the rate of gain, they would set as 0.3. So, with this set of parameters, what we uh, found uh, typically is that we have a settling time of our uh, auxiliary loop of about uh, 30 seconds, and the noise on geopt uh, on bright on bright target is uh, about uh, one percent or less. Uh, then in 2015 we went on Sky uh, to to check this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this approach, and we had. Uh, uh, Let's say a proof of concept uh, of this, um, and uh, here you see on the left uh, we have uh, so because the goal was uh, to have something that is able to uh, apply the uh, appropriate uh, uh, NCPA correction under different uh, uh, scene uh, scene condition. For example, when when the partial correction changes and the optical gain of the pyramid changes. So uh, here on the left you see the PSF uh, with no um, uh, NCPA correction, then uh, uh, with correction enabled in the center with a similar seeing, okay, and on the right with a, when the seeing is higher, and you see that, for example, uh, the, the the halo, you can see this, the halo of the PSF in the in the higher seeing image is, is higher, is, is less corrected because you have more power on the turbulence, but uh, the core of the PSF is uh, still uh, uh, round and doesn't uh, show any mark uh, of, of the of the NCPA shown in the in the left image. Then uh, finally we we were uh, using this uh, for science operation. And here you see one just one case when we have a, a zoom on a, on a globular cluster, um, uh, where in the three by three x second, where you see that uh, uncorrected and corrected PSF here on a faint star with is a R12 as a guide star and correcting 150 volts. So um, here I then uh, we have the proof we had the proof in 2015 of the of the of the working strategy the, the strategy uh, and our implementation was providing the, the, the correction we were looking for. And so we decided to implement uh, in, the, in the sequence of operation that uh, are, are done when uh, uh, the observation, the scientific observation is, is uh, set up. So here, uh, I, I just, just to give you an idea how, how it's done. So here, this is the GUI um, that the operators uh, have in front when, uh, when the, uh, the flow and now the soul system is operated. Um, so on the left, uh, you have a list of buttons. These are a bit of the, the, the different states in, in which uh, the, the system uh, uh, goes through uh, in, in, from the preset to, to be ready to the, to the scientific integration. So the first is just purely receiving a set of information from the TCS so that we put the, the, um, the wavefront sensor stage in the field the position that you expected for the AU reference, so we set up uh, uh, and, uh, and we have the magnitude of the AURF uh, um, uh, that uh, set up uh, the frequency of the CCD and so on. But this is just nominal. And then uh, we start in the second phase, that is uh, the active phase, when we look for the star in the, in the acquisition camera, we center the star, we center the pupil, we check the flux that we have on the wavefront sensor uh, camera. And then in the case, we refine a bit the frequency of the loop and so on. And then we close our first uh, loop with low gains. Then uh, we have the final phase, the most more interesting, I would say that, where we optimize the gains. So this, uh, this is the approach we did since the, the beginning. So we, we divided the, the, the gain. So we have, a, we have the possibility to have a modal gain. So each mode can have a different gain. But we decided to divide it in three uh, groups. Uh, tip tilt, uh, medium, and high order. And then we sweep uh, one group at a time, starting from the tip tilt. And uh, we sweep, uh, we sweep uh, the, the gains and we record uh, the wavefront sensor residuals. And then we look for the uh, minimum of the receiver. Once, once we have optimized the gain, then is the, now is the turn of the new button. 
The new button is the apply optical gain, where we um, we start with the open loop, uh, so uh, G opt measurement without applying any correction of the G opt, the optical gain. And uh, then uh, when we have a value that we trust, uh, so with a stable value of measurement, then we renormalize the, 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 the EO loop gains and we apply the slope normalization. Then we enable the uh, tracking loop for the G opt. And then we are finally uh, ready for the uh, integration of Skype. So this can be done in two ways, uh, one automatic mode. So all the steps are done automatically by the machine. So you not touch it, just look. And the other one is intervention mode. So when the target, you know, that is a bit more tricky or is at the edge of the uh, capability of the system, you can uh, put intervention mode and, and go back and forth uh, or, 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 or jumping from one step to the other. So finally, we have uh, some uh, uh, results. These are uh, really fresh from, uh, I think, from a few days ago, OK, uh, during the soil commissioning. So here, what I show you <coughs> is the case on, on a bright star. Um, in green, you have the, the, the seeing as measured by the dim, uh, the dim along the line of sight. And uh, then uh, I report here two values, the, the blue one and the red one. So the blue one is the geopt uh, as it is measured. So is the, is the estimation and applied, measured and applied um, to, the, to the loop. And the red one is uh, the ratio. So the, the, the quantity that you want to keep uh, uh, at the value of one. Uh, the oscillation of the red uh, is giving us also a, uh, of the ratio is giving us a, um, an estimation of, of how good we are doing in keeping the, the, the geopt on, on the good spot. Okay. So uh, here, what I, the common main comments are so here you see on the, on the left at the beginning, we have uh, the gain optimization phase, uh, then we by enable the, the, the G-opt. So the, the G-opt is not anymore one, but is uh, decreasing in order to compensate the partial correction. And then it's following, uh, you see the, is a, as a general behavior is uh, anti-correlated with the seeing as we expect uh, to be. So what's the seeing? And uh, as lower is the uh, optical gain uh, of the pyramid. Um, here, for example, we measure that uh, our ratio and is a, as a standard uh, deviation of 3% that, uh, uh, that tell us that for sure our geopt should, should have a, a, a lower, even lower uh, noise uh, because then there is a, the, the geopt uh, is, uh, is set up a filter by the loop transfer function that is moving the, the no measurement noise. Okay. Um, Next, uh, so then we went to uh, faint, uh, uh, fainter NGS, trying with uh, um, here a uh, 15 magnitude, uh, um, 15 magnitude. Now this was uh, simulated, okay, uh, we simulated in daytime. This is uh, just a spot in in closed dome uh, setup where we can uh, we have a calibration source. We can emulate a different magnitude. And we can uh, inject a turbulence on the secondary mirror uh, commands, uh, emulating a fixed uh, turbulence. In this case, it was 0.75 arc second. What we found is that uh, uh, using uh, the probe of 20 nanometer that we were using on the bright star, uh, the measurement is too noisy. So we we just uh, uh, measured the noise, different noise uh, value we found with different uh, probes, of course. And uh, then we were checking also the, what we see on the science because the limit is that we don't want to spoil the scientific image. And we saw that, of course, 100 nanometer, even uh, with this in, under this condition, was too, too high and was clearly seen on the, as a signature on the PSF. And then this, uh, we use this, uh, this measurement uh, just to uh, tune uh, the, the probe uh, amplitude for fainter magnitude. Then we went on sky. I think I'm short in time, but try to conclude uh, uh, quick. So uh, here we have a, um, a, uh, an NGS of R14 that is double, but the, the, the companion is uh, faint, so it was not uh, disturbing our measurement. Here you can see that we had a ratio of a, a sigma on the a standard deviation on the ratio about 11%. 
so he was working pretty well. The, the, the dim was not always uh, present here, but the scene was around one along the line of sight. Uh, below here, we see another case of magnitude 15. Now we are uh, in the highest binding. We are correcting only 54 modes. And the probe amplitude was raised to 60. And again, uh, the noise, uh, the scene was again about one. And the noise was uh, uh, the order of uh, 14 uh, percent, but still working. Um, in one case, we really went, went uh, in in, uh, in trouble. Okay, <laughs> and uh, you see here, for example, that we have some good look, looking good measurement uh, before enabling the correction. Then here, when we when the blue is enabled, the correction is enabled. The ratio is really jumping up and down and was scary. And we decided to do this measurement without job. Then we found out that uh, our reference star was double and was one of the worst condition, I would say, for the, the pyramid reference sensor where we have uh, uh, two stars uh, of the same uh, brightness uh, separated of a few hundred of mass. And, uh, and, and so, and in this case, the pyramid was still working I would say pretty good. So we have uh, pretty uh, almost diffraction limited image, but the, the geopt uh, was uh, was really uh, not uh, able to to work. But it is, is easily understand. Uh, uh, you can understand why. So. Uh, last uh, um, is that uh, we also tested on a small extended object. This is uh, asteroid Eugenia. The, I, I would like to have the image, but I don't have it. I'm waiting for the for the uh, observer to give me uh, uh, images, but is really a few days ago. And, um, and here again, uh, the nice thing to see is that, so this was a uh, uh, bin in two, 20 by 20 super aperture, 250 mode, and uh, the ratio was 3% noise. And uh, as expected, uh, we had uh, uh, a lower value of the geop because the, the object is expand, extended. So the, the the, the gain of the optical pyramid is dimmed. And, uh, and you can see that we, instead of 0.7, we had, that we had uh, on other stars, similar magnitude, the same, same condition, we were more about uh, 0.5. Uh, so job can, can deal with this kind of, of object too. Here are my conclusions. So the conclusion is that uh, at the BT, we, we uh, in the routine observation, we use uh, we do use a geopt correction and, and tracking is, is so far is the, the, is the, the simplest approach with just one, one scalar value to normalize the loops, but it is good for low order NCPA rejection. And we, then we, we found it working down to uh, or up to 15.5 magnitude and also on the small uh, asteroids. And we identify a couple of weakness one that I, I didn't mention before that is, is that with the scene that uh, uh, can, so at BT, sometimes you have a scene that can go high to 1.5 when, when, and then you have very uh, fast and, uh, and wide jumps in scene. And this is, can, can really be, uh, make a, a trouble for the job because of all this uh, um, time response, uh, basically. Uh, but usually when the scene is below 1.2, there are no, so it is, 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 can deal with the, with the typical uh, scene behavior. And then we have seen a one case of the multiple star where we were not able to have a, a good uh, uh, just measurement. Last, last uh, is that the next uh, step we are already working in is, uh, and especially with Agapito working in, is a modal gain machine that is uh, the implementation of the general and again optimization using the geop tracking that in this case needs to be modal because we need the information uh, really, um, the optical gain has to be taken into account uh, in more precisely mode, mode by mode in order to avoid the oscillation uh, of the mode. And uh, that's it from my side. Okay, thank you. Sorry, sorry I've been long, I think. A little bit long, yes. So we have several questions, uh, maybe short. Uh, there is a question about the gain, the geop gain by Benoit. I had the same question about the, the fact that the, the GOP is a scalar 
gain, uh, not a model uh, again, which is uh, um, uh, different for every mode, right? So yes, so in principle, this is uh, so this is a first order first order uh, uh, renormalization. Okay, the compensation for sure. There is a there is a, a well known uh, beha modal behavior. Okay. In in our in our experience, uh, what we have found is that when we have uh, uh, when we use high order modes, so when we use five hundred modes, for example, um, for sure high order modes uh, as much different with, with, with respect to mode thirty we are measuring. But because we are using a lot of modes, usually the correction is very good. So the the gain is close to one, maybe is 0.9. Okay. While on the other side, when we are, when there is the, the GOP is very low, maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4, because we are the, the, the star is faint, and we are and we are uh, correcting uh, uh, 50 modes, then uh, the the difference between uh, 30 and 50 or 20 is is uh, is is contained is not long big as as for mode uh, 500. Let's say. But for sure is is uh, so we plan to to have a. a to go for a, a model approach that for sure is more correct and, and more performing. performing. Okay. The question by Tim, Tim Morris here, uh, the anti-correlation between geopt and seeing is pretty strong. So what, what would be the increase uh, in error if you simply use the dim seeing value to calculate geopt? Uh, there is also other things is because uh, uh, for example if you have telescope vibration this will not be included in the in the in the in the dim so i don't know uh, i prefer to measure uh, directly on the on the on, on the reference sensor uh, up to is but but it's something that for sure we can we can uh, so for sure we, we now we have a discrete amount of data and we can start to do more analysis also to quantify this anti-correlation and, and for sure we can go back on this okay. okay well there are some other questions i think you you can maybe answer them on the slack